Title, A Millionaire Humiliates an Elderly Woman on the Plane and the Next Day Sees Her in His Boss's Office. On a late evening flight from New York to San Francisco, 35-year-old millionaire Lucas Grant boarded the plane, exuding an air of superiority. Lucas had worked tirelessly to amass his wealth, a success story rooted in his meteoric rise in the real estate world. However, Lucas's wealth had brought an unfortunate side effect, a sense of entitlement that clouded his empathy. He often believed his success placed him above others, especially the elderly, whom he saw as burdensome and out of touch. As he made his way down the plain aisle, Lucas noticed an elderly woman sitting in the aisle seat of his assigned row. Dressed in a simple but clean dress, with short gray hair and a warm, unassuming smile, she was tidily sorting through her belongings, seemingly lost in thought. Without bothering to introduce himself or make small talk, Lucas cleared his throat loudly, glaring at her. Excuse me, this is my seat, he said curtly. The woman, startled by his abrupt tone, looked up with apologetic eyes and explained gently, Oh, I'm terribly sorry, young man. I have a bit of arthritis, and the aisle seat helps with my legs. Lucas rolled his eyes, muttering under his breath, you could have just booked first class if you wanted extra comfort. He didn't wait for her response, flagging down a flight attendant and demanding they switch his seat. The flight attendant politely explained that the plane was full, but Lucas wouldn't let it go. The following day, Lucas strolled into his company headquarters, a state-of-the-art building in downtown San Francisco, for a meeting with Mr. Thorne, the CEO of a major investment firm they were hoping to partner with. This deal was crucial for Lucas's company, and he knew Thorne's firm could propel his business to new heights. Lucas was ushered into the CEO's large office, where he waited, running through his pitch in his head. After a few minutes, the doors opened, and to his shock, the elderly woman from the plane walked in. She moved gracefully, dressed in an elegant suit that radiated authority. Lucas stared in disbelief, recognizing her instantly but unable to speak. Mr. Thorne walked in right behind her, a big smile on his face. Lucas, I'd like you to meet Mrs. Eleanor Thorne, my mother and the majority shareholder of our firm, Mr. Thorne announced warmly. She's decided to take a more active role in our operations. Eleanor met Lucas's gaze with a calm, assessing look, her eyes betraying no hint of their encounter on the plane. She extended her hand. It's a pleasure to see you again, Mr. Grant, she said evenly, her eyes unwavering. Lucas's heart raced. He shook her hand, trying to hide his shock, muttering a quick, nice to meet you. He was acutely aware that she might have mentioned the plane incident to her son. Anxiety started to gnaw at him. Had his chances of landing this deal evaporated? Mr. Thorne led Lucas through the presentation, but Lucas found it impossible to concentrate. Eleanor's quiet presence was unsettling, a constant reminder of his arrogance. At the end of the presentation, Mr. Thorne excused himself, leaving Lucas and Eleanor alone in the conference room. She looked at him, her gaze calm yet powerful. Mr. Grant, she began softly, I want you to tell me one thing, how do you view others? Caught off guard, Lucas fumbled. I, I am sorry. Eleanor's voice remained gentle but firm. How do you view people who can't give you anything in return? Do you treat everyone with respect, or only those who can advance your interests? Lucas swallowed, feeling the sting of her words. It was clear she remembered everything from the plane. I. I suppose I could be more considerate, he stammered, his voice barely a whisper. Eleanor gave him a long, piercing look before saying, consideration is a foundation for building trust. I expect people in business to treat others with integrity, regardless of rank or wealth. Her words, though not directly accusatory, 
sliced through Lucas's self-assured demeanor. Without another word, she turned and walked out, leaving him alone to confront his own behavior. That night, Lucas couldn't shake the conversation with Eleanor. The weight of her words lingered, forcing him to reflect on his arrogance. Memories of past incidents surfaced, times he treated people with contempt, ignored their needs, or dismissed them simply because they held no power over him. He realized how blind he'd been, trapped in a bubble of privilege. Determined to change, Lucas took steps to adjust his attitude. He arranged a meeting with his team, urging them to prioritize respect and kindness toward everyone they encountered, whether clients or staff. He wanted his company to reflect the values he was now striving to adopt. He even reached out to local charities, pledging a substantial donation to support programs for the elderly and underprivileged. He realized his transformation wasn't going to happen overnight, but he was committed to making meaningful changes. A few days later, Lucas was called back for a follow-up meeting with Mr. Thorne and Eleanor. Lucas entered the room with a humble demeanor, ready to accept whatever verdict they had. Eleanor's expression was inscrutable, but there was a hint of curiosity in her eyes. Mr. Thorne started, Lucas, we were both impressed with the adjustments you made over the past few days. We've seen that you're striving to create a more respectful, 